my companion and I were walking through the market, through the Palenque, and uh, we saw somebody selling corn. And I thought I would buy some, so I bought some corn. And my companion didn't know that if you eat corn before cooking it, it, it can be sweet. But there are only certain types of corn that you can do that with. So I thought that I had bought this sweet corn, and I was eating it, and I thought it tasted great. And he thought that I was weird. Um, but I said, it's great, it tastes sweet, you can do it. And he, he believed me, he bought some corn, and he tried some, and later he had an allergic reaction. Uh, <laughs> It was horrific. So he had an allergic reaction and he like couldn't breathe and he passed out on the floor and we called the mission president's wife and got him some Benadryl and we were home for the next day. It was pretty exciting. I thought I'd killed my companion. Pretty traumatic. I have a couple stories about allergic reactions. Again, it's 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 a new environment. There's it's a new world in the Philippines. So you um the the food is completely different and people eat lots of things differently and so as a result like the the way that their bodies react to food is is different um so some people can drink the water from the tap and it's great and for some people like don't you dare drink the water from the tap and always use your like filter water bottle and i was about three quarters of my way through my mission and um was having the mission president come over and was hosting like a steak fireside kind of a thing. And so I worked with some of the members to bring some food and stuff like that. And, um, and I had an allergic reaction to this food. Um, I was on an island called Mindoro, which is the coolest place in the Quezon City Mission. So if you get to go to Mindoro, just know it's like the coolest place ever. So I'm there and, and we're driving around this island um, and I start to get this rash and I... You know, it itches a little bit, but it's fine, and it starts to grow, and I notice I'm getting some spots here, and my neck is starting to itch, and about the time that we're on the other side of the island, one of the people in the car looks at me and says, you're breaking out into, like, hives or something like that, and I don't know what's going on, you know. We make it finally back to uh, to our home, our apartment, and um, we get a bunch of Benadryl, but my entire body was, like... Like, my entire body was covered in, like, in these, it was just red and puffy and itchy, and I remember running back and forth and, like, slapping my arms across my chest and my body because I didn't know what else to do, and I just, I, the only thing, I didn't know what else to do, I was going crazy, so I just ran around until I was too tired, and the Benadryl kicked in, and I slept for, like, two days, and then it was all gone. Just, no, like, just, the food is great. Cook it safely. Always be really careful because you're going to buy food from like markets and stuff like that. And what it's like an open air market. So you've got like the pig hanging there, you know, and you say, I would like a kilo of pig for X amount of pesos. And you haggle for a little bit and then they chop it up in front of you. Here you go. And um, but just know it's not always the cleanest. So do your best to clean it and cook it thoroughly. And um, hopefully you won't have any problems. <laughs> There's something that they sell called balut, which is a uh, half-developed duck embryo, uh, which they um, heat up in the ground. Um, I don't know, kind of like a cold bath kind of a thing. And then um, it's pretty much like a hard-boiled duck embryo. I won't tell you all the stories that I've had with balut. It's delicious. There are some parts of it that are less delicious. Here's how you consume balut, okay? So you crack it open, you, you just open up the top part, and you have to be aware of which, which side that you're op opening it from, because one part has all of the juices up in the top, and then the other has kind of like a hard, kind of tastes like a rubber ball. Bouncy ball. Anyways, so you open up the juice part, suck out the juices, open up the rest, there's the duck. Eat the duck, it's great. It's like eating chicken soup. And then you have this hard, rubbery ball thing. Most people don't eat it. I did. Tasted like a rubber ball. But probably better for you. <laughs> um, and it's great. Um, try and make sure that the... Um, ask somebody, like, how, how old the eggs are. Um, because the, the more they're developed, the more duck-like they will become. And the... Uh, more feathery and uh, crunchy they are. So younger is better. You will eat rice for just about every meal. Rice is wonderful. 
you will grow to love it because you'll have it all the time. Um, what what people will do is they'll they'll make what's called kanin. That's that's the word for cooked rice. Um, you have your kanin, and then on top of it, you have your ulam. And ulam is just the word for whatever is on top of your rice that you're gonna eat. You know, ulam could be soy sauce, which is what some people eat uh, if they're if they don't have the resources to afford anything else to put on top of it. Uh, you'll eat a lot of rice in the morning. Some people will eat something called pandisal which is, um, it's kind of like a little, just a roll, like a breakfast roll with little dusty bread crumbs on it and it tastes great and everybody loves it. And so you'll be sleeping and then you'll hear some guy walking out of the street and he'll be going, PANDISOL! And that means that someone is selling PANDISOL and you should go buy it, <laughs> it's great. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's, that's about the options. I remember there was a, a weird phase in my mission where we had a supermarket um, and so I thought I'd go out on a limb and buy some milk and some cereal and it was not the same. So just know that if you're a cereal eater, just eat the local stuff. It's better. Um, and then for Tanghalian for lunch, they would eat, you know, whatever, whatever it was. It was rice and ulam. Um, you, some, some regional places that, that are, are popular to eat at, um, are some restaurants called, there's one called Mangi Nasal. And Mangi Nasal is popular among missionaries particularly because you can have unlimited rice. So you get your chicken and then you get your rice and it's like this contest for the missionaries to see how many cups of rice you can eat with it. I know a kid who I think had like, I wanna say it was like 23 cups of rice. They asked him to leave. <laughs> so that's a popular place. There's, there's a place called Jollibee. Um, which you don't see a lot of, but it's kind of an equivalent to um, like a Wendy's or a McDonald's. Um, so they have their burgers and stuff like that, but they will always serve their burgers with rice. They have McDonald's, which they call Makto, and at Makto, um, they'll sell, again, burgers and stuff like that, but instead of fries, they will come with a cup of rice. So everything comes with rice. Um, it, the restaurants aren't quite the same instead of a McDonald's where like there's somebody in the corner sweeping up stuff like you can't throw your own stuff away because someone will run to you and grab their tray like that's their job so it's like a high-end kind of like McDonald's posh restaurant kind of a thing you know so that's fun they have these little um, places where you can um, just buy some ulam and some some cottonine, some rice and stuff, and, and those are always really good. Jackfruit um, tastes really good when it's cooked. Um, that's a great thing. Something else that's unique to the Philippines is a, um, a fruit called dorian. Um, they're actually kind of a scary fruit. They like grow up in these trees like giant maces, and if they fall on your head, they could kill you. I'm not even joking. So they're like these giant things. You crack them open and they smell really bad. The, the phrase is that they smell like hell, but they taste like heaven, okay? So like, <laughs> so, so you open them up. When I tasted it, it's an acquired taste. It tastes like soapy onions the first time you try it. And then it grows on you and it's delicious. Um, something else that is uh, a regional food that, that I have grown to love and miss very much um, is buko juice is what they call it, but it's it's coconut juice. They they get it when it's still green. It's called a nyog, and then they chop off the top, and they have like the, this little kind of like sack uh, where all of the coconut meat is. But when it's still green, it's soft, and so the flesh is like really yummy and sweet. Again, it's an acquired taste. The first time that I tasted it, I was like, this does not taste like coconut juice because the coconut juice that we drink in the United States is very sweet and has lots of um, sugar added. Um, but if you have enough of it, it's like the best thing. One other thing that I really miss, I miss it so much, it's so good, is it's it's called um, buko de pandan, and it's like, um, or buko pandan, and it's like, it, pandan is this little leaf that um, is used more for smell than for flavor, but when they make this extract out of it, it's kind of like this green stuff and and it's addictive. It's so good. It's so good. Um, so anytime that I saw someone with buko pandan, I would go and get it because it's like the best thing in the world. They have really, really, really good fruit. Um, if you've grown up maybe like in the Pacific 
um, islands or stuff like that, then you may be familiar with some of the different species of banana. But if you've grown up on the mainland, usually you, you only deal with one kind of banana. Let me assure you, there are so many different kinds of bananas and the smaller they are, the sweeter they are. They taste amazing. They're so good. Um, the, the pineapple there is beyond anything you've ever tasted. I don't care if you grew up in Hawaii, it is so good and so fresh and so sweet. And they'll put a little bit of salt on it to kind of enhance the flavor. And it literally tastes like candy. Um, in fact, if you have like Laffy Taffy's in the United States, that really, really sweet banana flavor is not based off of the bananas that we eat in the United States. It's based off of the species in the Philippines. So like that flavor that you get, that's like super sweet that's what you're eating in the Philippines is so good so good um, they've got like rambutan which is um, I think they have it in, in Hawaii as well but it's like this fluffy red fruit and you cut it open and you eat it and it's yummy um, I don't know it's really good you'll eat um, probably you'll eat some sardinas which are sardines in a can open them up put them on your rice and you eat it it's great one other thing that's important, I remember one time I was, I was companions with um, another uh, American and we decided that uh, we wanted to, to try and I think, I think we, were, we were companions like a year in and it had been a year for both of us, okay? So we decided that to commemorate our one year we were going to make an American meal and have like sandwiches and salads no rice, you know, and, and when the Filipinos saw that we weren't cooking our vegetables, they called us goats. Um, so it's weird not to eat vegetables unless they're cooked. Just, just know that cook your vegetables and then people won't call you a goat. You will eat every part of the chicken, every part. You will eat the feet, you'll eat the neck, you'll eat the head, you will eat, you'll eat every part of the fish, you'll eat the, the brains of the fish, you'll, um, they're, they're very conservative and it's great. You'll eat the intestines. Those are actually really yummy. As long as you uh, make sure that they're clean and good, they sell them out in the open markets. It's great. So San Jose is located on the island of Mindoro um, and is my favorite place. <laughs> my mission. Um, what was so neat about it was that, again, it's, 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 uh, I would go to sleep and I was sleeping under the stars, you know, and then I would, you know, wake up and wake up to the sound of the beach, you know, and it was like a really like unreal experience. But at the same time, it's, it's not the same kind of, of beach that perhaps we're used to because people literally live right on the ocean, you know, and so you've got people that um, are fishing um, and you've got like diapers floating around in the water and stuff like that. So it's kind of an interesting place, but it's beautiful and wonderful. Again, because it's kind of an island um, when when there are floods or when there's a lot of rain and there's a rainy season, um, which would be the equivalent of, of a winter in places that aren't so um, hot. Um, again, there's a lot of flooding. And so, um, I remember uh, hiking up my my pants as high as they could go and just trekking around in in you know thigh deep water to go and, and preach the gospel and um, and that was a really neat and rewarding experience for me. Um, San Jose um, is unique in its um, I I want to say almost a, a tourist kind of a, an appeal. Um, they've got some resorts where you know a lot of white people will come and and eat and so when the mission president or you know some of the senior couples come to visit um they may like take the missionaries out to dinner and they'll you know go to a nice place and eat and and that's unique um but really cool at the same time um a lot of walking um you can you can um, pay to have uh, a trike come and take you wherever you need to go. Um, trikes are, are, at least for San Jose, the best way to go. There, there's a couple of different ways that you can do transportation in the big cities. They've got buses and jeepneys and trikes. Um, but in San Jose, um, because it's, it's such a small place you don't see a lot of jeepneys and, and you really wouldn't take one anywhere. So, if you are going to take public transportation, you're going to hire a trike. Um, 
if you have somebody with you, you can cram two people into the side compartment. A trike, let me let me define what a trike is for those that don't know what a trike is. So a trike is like a World War II motorcycle with a little egg compartment on the side. Not like one of the ones in the cartoons where it's like open air kind of a thing and you wear goggles and ride around on it, you know, but it's like, it's more like a compartment and it may even have like a little door. Um, and so you'll go in there, you can fit two Filipinos in there, one and a half Americans. Um, so, <laughs> so either be ready to squish or, you know, that's great. Um, I think the most I've seen people cram on a trike is like five people. They get very creative in the Philippines. Um, but sometimes one person will ride um, behind the motorcyclist and then a couple of other people will ride on the compartment and so you're going to use trikes or you're going to walk. Um, and you'll do a lot of walking in Mindoro. Um, so invest in some good shoes. I went through eight pairs. Um, so, yep. You walk a lot, um, and then it, it's one of those places where because it's so pastoral, um, you have investigators that are living in, in these kind of like cool little bamboo huts and stuff like that, and it's beautiful and wonderful. I, I can't forget some of those really neat experiences where I've met some of those people. Um, the people there are so friendly and kind. Um, everybody says that about the Philippines, but that's not always the case, particularly in the city. But in Mindoro, people are, are very friendly and very kind um, and um, will, uh, are, are always smiling, always ready and willing to talk. They're happy people. And so it makes sense um, for them to, to accept the gospel because, because they're already happy and they, and they already have that element of truth. And it rings true with them when they hear something that, that makes as much sense as the gospel does. They have some of the best... Um, little like bread treats that you've ever had. They're like super good. They, they make it with this thing called ube, which is a root um, that's purple and it looks like it, it's just really good. Um, so they've got that. They've got some fantastic fish in San Jose. They also have some really great knives. Um, the Philippines um, is uh, culturally a really interesting place because um, that's kind of, that's one of the areas in the world where historically there were headhunters, um, and, and just some really, really cool, like cultural history, um, that's unique to the Philippines. That's also where Magellan died, was in the Philippines. Um, they've got some great songs about that. So, so in Mindoro, uh, that's where I got what's called a butterfly knife. Butterfly knife is a really unique and cool tool that is uh, special to the Philippines. I'm pretty sure that's where it originated. The story was that when, um, when Spain took over the Philippines and Filip the Filipinos were fighting for their independence, um, the unique thing about a butterfly knife is that it looks like a stick. It's kind of like a switchblade, only you have to like flip it open and fly it out. So it's it's really cool. The handle closes around the blade and then opens up again, and you can hold it. Um, and so there's different unique ways of opening it and all sorts of nifty tricks. Anyways, when I got my butterfly knife in the Philippines, I bumped into someone who was selling some, and I asked them for him. He said he was out, but that he would swing by our place and deliver the butterfly knife. And when I got it. I thought I was pretty good at, you know, flipping it open and back and forth and stuff like that. When I opened it up for the very first time, I chopped open my finger and I still have a scar. <laughs> and what was really funny is that they haggle over there. So here I am bleeding and he's like, oh no, no, I'm so sorry. And I'm like, oh, it's so sharp. And he's like, well, I'll only sell it to you for a hundred pesos cheaper. And I'm saying, oh no, I don't know. And so it was like the more I bled, the less <laughs> expensive the knife got. <laughs> it was a pretty great experience. Uh, they're great. Um, so yeah, I guess that's, those are some really neat things about San Jose. Filipinos love to sing. So whether they can sing or not, they will sing. Um, so you will hear some really, really great singers and you will hear some terrible singers, but they're all happy to be singing. And that's one of the things that I love about it. Um, so Mindoro um, kind of has that, that element to it. Um, it's a place where people are, are, are happy and um, proud to be Filipino. And nagpapasalama po ako sa pagkakataong ito na ibahagi ang aking mga pakiramdam tungkol sa Pilipinas ang mga tao na nakilala ko po dyan o doon. <laughs> um, Namimiss ko, ko po kayo um, bawat isa sa inyo na na ginawa ang mga bagay para um, influensyahan ang aking buhay. Uh, nituro sa akin 
ang mga prinsipyo at ang ang mga ang mga bagay na kailangan kong malaman para magpatuloy sa sa daan na inihanda ng Diyos para sa akin. Pasensya na nawawala ang aking Tagalog at nahihirapan na po ako, nanosbleed po ako. Pero, um, salamat para sa mga tao na naituro ko po na natanggap ang Ebanghelyo uh, na nagpatuloy na ibahagi ang kanilang mga patotoo sa kanilang mga kaibigan. Um, nagpapasalamat po ako sa mga, mga tao sa mga word ko po na naituro po sa akin ang kahalakahan ng kasigasigan at um, arang mga mabubuting trabaho ng Diyos. Um, nagpapasalamat po ako sa mga halimbawa na ibinigay po nila sa akin um, para sa bawat isa sa inyo na itinuro po sa akin na na kahit kung hindi ako perfecto na minahal nyo po ako gaya perfecto ako minahal nyo po ako sa isang perfectong, perfectong pagmamahal uh, mahal ko po din kayo alam ko po na ang Ebanghelyo ni Jesus Cristo at ang simbahan ni Jesus Cristo ng mga banal sa mga uh, ng mga banal sa mga huling araw ay ang totoong simbahan ni Jesus Cristo na ang templo ay ang isang bahay ng Diyos at na ang mga pamilya ay maaring maging magpakailanman kung mabuhay tayo sa isang paraan na ay katangkap-tangkap sa Diyos ang mission ko po ay ang isa sa mga pinakamahalang bagay na ginawa ko po sa aking buhay at nagpapasalamat po ako sa bawat isa sa inyo na ibinigay ng pagkakataon na sa akin na maglingkod at magmahal. Mahal ko po kayo at iniwang ko po ang aking puto-oto dito sa inyo. Sa pangalan ni Heso Kristo, aking takabagdikta sa manunubos. Amen.